So, if you older gentlemen want to get laid, tired of being alone, go down to your local doctor, get some Bagra, and check out Jim's podcast. The man knows how to sarge. You gotta get there, teach your rapport, all the tricks. You're tired of being lonely, do something about it. Get off that walker. <laughs> oh yeah. What's happening guys, Steve Maeda. This is the Austin Men's Development interview series. Very, very special person today. One of my favorite people, one of your favorite people, Mr. Jim Simmons. And we shot this on August 10th during a workshop, one of our men's development workshops. Guys, if you're in Austin and you don't come to our local meetups or sign up for MD Excellence, do it, do it do it but if you were a part of tsl or men's development excellence you would know who jim is and everybody just loves him in this podcast we're talking a lot about men and sex and seduction and how this can screw you up and make you better and all these different things but it depends on the directions you go and your mentalities and being around people like us who can help you with that journey funny story is is right after we shot this we're driving back in jim's car and we're shooting ourselves about basically like man this podcast sucked i hope you guys like it we'll see what happens and jim's car breaks down we're on a workshop so we had to go up and meet the clients we fixed the car then we previewed this entire podcast to the md excellence board the day after it was shot and everybody was like man this podcast doesn't suck this is exactly what i needed to hear about seduction and sex and how confusing it can be how we can get tied up in all this political stuff but more importantly how we can get into the solution of having great relationships feeling good about our sexuality and not being like oh my god it's a me too world and feminism i have to hate that in order to be good with women no you don't well anyway i'll shut up watch the podcast okay so we're here with jim simmons we're here with steve maeda <laughs> so um uh, uh, man i've known you for a long time yeah Let's like bypass all that introduction stuff. What did you want to talk about today? Um, on the way over here, we started a conversation about generically what a young man should know about sex, which is certainly worthwhile. And it's a big subject and it's probably more than we could even do this afternoon. Um, and inevitably it got on to the people who don't know their own sexuality, haven't experienced it, right. and are uncomfortable and fearful about it, and and don't know why, you know. And you layer on top of that the uh, the not not only doubt but the low self-esteem that so many people have about how I'm not good enough at least extending all the way into, I hate myself, I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> <laughs> and anywhere in that spectrum, we could talk about all of that. I guess in the middle is the people that are uncomfortable, uncertain about sex, just simply out of lack of experience. Um, I feel for the guy, last night was the Thursday night meetup in Austin. If you're in Austin, show up for these Thursday night meetups, all right? This, this was very cool, like it always is, every week, very cool. We had one of our guys who has been in TSL and has done some of the work, and he's, he said that I'm working on 90% of my of, of my problems in life, and and I'm doing pretty well, and I have a plan, right? I planned this out, and, and I'm working the plan, and and I'm and I'm making an effort. And all I heard was, "There's 10% of this shit that I don't know what to do with." <laughs> I want to know about that 10%. <laughs> Because inevitably, that's where the sex part is, is in that 10% of our problems that we're not addressing, that we're afraid to talk about, that we just don't know what the fuck to do with. What do you, what, 
how do you deal with this? This is interesting because there's so many different directions you can go with this because it, it's a reoccurring problem. I mean, one of the things that when you enter into guys and sex and teaching them how to be good with sex or women or dating or relationships, it tests you at a spot that is very different than everything else in your life. Hence totally. the 90%. Totally. Right? So 90% of your life is good with career and fitness and all these things, which have their own problems that are unique and tough and but all this guy's stuff. handling them i mean he's yeah. he, he's yeah, very he's got, analytical yeah. he's broke it all down yeah. he knows where the hang-up is he's got a plan he's working the fucking plan i mean it just but sex doesn't work like that sex and relationships don't work like that and it's not just like escalating doesn't work like that dating doesn't work like that mm -hmm. having a relationship doesn't work like that mm -hmm. A lot doesn't work like that. <laughs> well, it, you know, it's when you get to sex, it's more like finger painting. You just have to get in there and make a mess. It's this like crazy abstract thing of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's what it is. This is this is the more abstract part, and and rational linear thinking yeah. is not going to help you figure out your sexuality or how to share it with anybody else. but like we were talking about this too and so this is like there's a lot to this discussion that i don't want to i don't want to make it i don't want to go off in too many tangents but if you're not having sex it's so easy to hate yourself because if you're yes no frustration disappointment and pretty soon you're blaming yourself and you're not good enough and there's some obviously something wrong with you it's like you're missing such a huge part of you if you're not sexually active. And when you're missing that huge part of you and you're in deficit of it, and you're like, man, I want a relationship, but I can't. And then you try and you try in the same ways you got in shape or you got, yeah. You yeah, know, the same linear awesome methods. Career. Yeah. Yeah. You basically like turn to this point where you go like, man, I am flawed. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just not attractive enough. How many times? It's it's like a broken record. I'm not attractive enough. I don't um, I don't have what it takes. You know, I'm not enough of a man. I I'm can't not, connect with people. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. just something wrong with me. And what a weird thing. That's like, that's like, man, I didn't work out on my arm for all of my life, so I just wasn't meant to have an arm. You know, just because my arm's atrophied or something like that. And I, I think that that's where we're running into. But not having sex or relationships is such a core part of us, or it hits such a core part of us that oh, we're yeah. like. And we're constantly aware of it. Yeah. Every night when we jack off. We're constantly aware of it, you know. And every, every time that your dick pops up out of nowhere, you, you know that you're not getting laid. And a few people have, have managed to manipulate their, their minds and, and their thought processes to really suppress their sexuality, but they have to work to do that. Right. Right. And then there's the no fap guys that, again, they have to work to get this out of the way. But for the other 98% of us, our sexuality is, is right there around us almost daily. You know, some guys could go a few days, <laughs> but, but still, nevertheless, we know we're in deficit. Yeah. Yeah. So back to this, because that's one of those factions. It's like, man, you know, these guys who are so good at all these other things. Yeah. You know, it, and it leads to all this self-hate. But there's another thing to this is that when we are looking at all the ways we became successful... Whenever I hear somebody advertising that too much, I'm like, oh, you're hiding something. You know, like when it's like, I'm so great at this. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, it's yeah. Like, Jim, I'm so good. I'm so good at public speaking and I'm so good at running my online groups that, yeah, you know, I'm working at this other stuff. It's going to be fine. I'm posing next so... to my Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. It's such a, it, to me, that's just one of those things where it's like, oh, man, you, you're really afraid of something and you, mm -hmm. won't, you don't mm -hmm. want to look at it. Um, which goes into this other whole thing of bettering yourself or what we specifically see when we're talking about sex. I, I just don't want to leave this page too unturned and, and so we could go back to it. But what do you think 
a guy who doubts himself what he needs to do when it comes to getting better at talking with women. Talk to people. Uh, it's, uh, and so by that, what do you mean? I'm, I'm sorry. I know that sounds really yeah. simple, but it is. And you said, you said this to the guy last night. I've heard you say it to other people. You say it to people on the calls. And they go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I got that. But then they don't do it. So really specifically. Our Steel Town kid from England pissed me off last week. Because oh, yeah. He's supposed to just be saying hello yeah. to everybody. Yeah. Every man, woman, child, everybody. And he only says hello to good-looking women. Right. Which is a recipe for disaster. I didn't go so far as to tell him all that. But it is. It really is. It, it the the foundation of being able to talk to attractive women is being able to talk to average people that you've never met before. People that you run into, you know, in the store or at the sporting event or, you know, pumping gas. The people that pump gas next to you every day, you should be able to talk to them. Mm. And when you can do that, then you can think about talking to an attractive woman. But until you do that, you get the same thing that we all know if you don't freeze up you at least get so terribly nervous that you go in there and just stumble around and if you're lucky she thinks you're cute but mostly you fuck it up and so as simple as that answer sounds talk to people be able to talk to people um, that's the answer you know I, I mean we could go over this a lot but as I'm sitting here listening to you I'm thinking like man what's your story with that oh um, let me think about that for a minute because it's that, that's back there a little ways yeah no in, in but but this is one of those things like when did you man there's who was Luke was saying this he was, he was saying last night, he's like, man, there was a time where it's just like that whole hot chick thing didn't matter anymore. Because it was like if you got a hot chick, you had sex with her a few times, it didn't oh. matter. You know, it's like, man, I just want what I want. I want. And like any sex could be good and opening up your mind to it. And there's this thing with socialization where you're going like, you know, I want to talk to people because I want to be popular. I want to mm -hmm. have all this stuff. I want to be the guy that has command of the room. But it's like, when did you just go like, you know what? God, I just like people. Like, where was that conversation? Where was that where it was just like... Um, that was my wife, the dear departed. Yeah. And she was an advertising executive. Mm -hmm. And so, as a result, we had a social life. Yeah. And went to all the chamber of commerce things and the cocktail parties and all that crap and I didn't really enjoy that but it gave me a counterpoint to the people that I actually worked with in in a factory we built microelectronics and stuff um, and I found that the people that I worked with were more open and honest and real and that's where I actually learned to have a conversation. Uh, part of it was driven by the necessity of work, but uh, after that, I like these people. But is that where you found the joy of conversation? Um, and where was that conversation? You know, where was that time, wherever you were at, but where you, you were talking to somebody and you noticed the smell, you noticed for the first time like wow if I just look at somebody's smile or that little it, crinkle on their face yeah, where the was, detail of them came out it was Russ Cable and he's he's a storyteller he, and he's 
from like Fort Worth and you know when he was a little kid his dad took him to to Six Flags to build the fucking park yeah. they built the park wow oh right? shit oh, yeah, his, wow. his, so his, his, <coughs> his dad was an electrician and he, and he and Russ was a little kid and he took him with him building the park and he would uh, Rusty Rusty Cable Rusty Cable that's the guy's name and he was a storyteller and he was just a blast to be around and for some reason he liked me and so we spent a lot of time together and from that you were like wow man just the simple human story can bring so much joy and connection with people well i came to realize that everybody has a story yeah i think he was the first real storyteller that that i have been around and I came to realize that everybody had a story. Yeah. And, and I saw a lot of our guys in our social circle that when, when they were with Russ, they would come up with theirs, like going to Jamaica. And, so he would bring it out of them. Yeah. You know, and I wonder why that is because, you know, everybody wants to be that guy that can be the dude that inspires other people. But I honestly think it's the genuineness, you know? Like, what's the greatest trait of Rusty Cable, who I didn't know? He's real. And he was so real yeah. that everybody who was around him felt like it just started happening, you know, it just to be able to express. He felt larger than life, but we were around him every day. Yeah. So, you know, you knew it was just real. But the stories were wild, and, and when you start, and, and that's a principle that I, that I believe, that everybody has great stories. But we kind of talk them down, we kind of think, oh, that's, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to boast, you don't want to be immodest. Yeah. We've all been taught to, you know, don't, don't act too proud. But God damn it, you got great stories. Everybody has great stories in them. That, on that note, I've been thinking about this whole time you're talking, the first woman mm -hmm. who had that great story. That great story where she talked to you, she seduced you with words. It wasn't just her looks anymore. That the more she talked, the more you were, oh my God, I wonder how she orgasms what she how she would touch me how she would make me feel how she would bring the man out of me nah I just went ahead and fucked all those <laughs> less talk more action nowadays you know nowadays I flirt that's yeah. all I do but we never really I, I only have like three that that I ever that I flirt with on a regular basis, and we don't go very far. The only ones that I push it into what kind of lingerie are you wearing are women that I'll never see again, and that I know it's going to be over in about five minutes. <laughs> so what's this? What's this non? What kind of lingerie are you wearing? Flirting. Um. It's it's largely about hi how are you, um, why are you here, and then I I don't know how I turn it to what kind of woman are you because I see that you're very feminine mm. and I'm fascinated by by femininity and you're you're beautiful I mean what is it about you and how did you pick that dress today and what does that say and from what I see of you you probably have beautiful lingerie <laughs> what can I say <laughs> 
it's so funny man i i think like one of the best parts about femininity is that we can't understand a part of it yet we're drawn to it and what i see is so many people talk about what's wrong with femininity because they don't understand it right and you know as men we it, we're not feminine right or we might have a feminine side or whatever but we don't we don't embrace it in the same way and we're a long way from real understanding right yeah. right and there's that thing that we love and we also hate too because it's like there's so many things about women that i don't understand and i don't want to be around you know but um it, it's there's that aspect that it's like the mystery that's never solved you know mm-hmm. that that is the fire that is the spark that lights the fire of seduction the attraction it's that mystery that can never be solved and and i think for men they mix it up and think it's just their dick and don't get me wrong the dick you know well it actually it is that's where we start you know and and that's all we know for a long time yeah that's the real spark right um and i was thinking about that this morning early when we're young when our hormones are raging we're we want to have sex to get what we want but i think Mm. as we grow and mature what we're looking for what i'm looking for is the response from a woman which is the beauty of this the response that you can get right Come on, stand up, turn that way. Let me see. Show me. You know, the response. It's like this, how what I put out, how it affects you and how what you put out affects me. So this exchange that's happening. Right. And then it turns into an exchange. As we, I don't want to say get older, but get more experienced, um, we realize it's more than just getting our rocks off. Right. And, and, and I think... The attraction for me is based on the contrast, how how different and separate they are, which I'm sure isn't true for everybody. Um, Guys who are effeminate probably don't don't work off of that, work off that contrast between masculine and feminine, and and the and the interplay I, I i'm not sure how it works for them but they're into it too you know <laughs> they get theirs um but yeah it's not so much the unknown about feminine femininity it's the contrast and i like my role as a man you know my position as a man um but if I was a woman, I'm pretty sure I'd be loving that too. You know, it's just the opportunity to get out there and, and dance. For myself, it makes me think of this. Cause, so you were thinking like, man, I was just thinking about this this morning, which makes me think of your morning thoughts. <laughs> but yeah, what are the, one of the things that I always wonder, man is these dudes who are so pissed off, right? And should I even, like, care or bother or whatever? And then these women that are so pissed off. And there's been, yeah. for me, I've seen a lot more women that are pissed off for a longer amount of time. Now there's just so many dudes that are pissed off and they're all coming up through the woodwork. But the men that are pissed off and the women that are pissed off, it's the same issue. They don't feel like their sex. And that can be like, I get the argument. Like if I said that to a woman who's really angry about men or whatever, it's like, you know, she's going to be, I'm not angry about men. If I say that to a man who's really angry about women, I'm not angry at women. But then when I say, let's say to the man, man, you just don't, you don't know what it's like to feel like a man. You don't know what it's like to feel the, the virtues of sex or ambition or whatever or maybe they have their ambition down but not their sex down it, it, there's always the sex is always the missing component of a guy that mm-hmm. feels anger at women or from my perspective at least mm-hmm. when you don't feel the power of your sex man fundamentally 
the urges for sex, the satisfaction of sex. The sa- if you're a man, the satisfaction of a woman, a heterosexual man, the satisfaction of a woman and just how awesome that is. There's so much anger that you have at society and every freaking person in your life. They're disappointed. I mean, on a practical level, that they're frustrated, but they're disappointed. Uh, we, whether we listen closely or not, still we all hear about how wonderful it's supposed to be. Hmm. Because there are a lot of people for whom sex is an, an amazing thing. You know. A true comfort, an expression of creativity, yada yada, it's great. But they tried it and it wasn't great. Man, I'm gonna interrupt, I'm sorry, but that's one of those things. Somebody that is seeking satisfaction in sex who does not feel like a man looks for something which is totally like it's a I guess it's a benefit of sex but it's totally not it's like outside of the language of somebody who is a seducer like for instance if we talk about sex Mm -hmm. it's like oh man the beauty and the the god women and and having the dance oh man there's so in in just noticing their bodies activity and yeah and of course there could be the orgasm and of course there could be the power there could be the like domination yeah. Yeah. but if all i hear is that is like oh man i fucked this chick or I, you know man it's about like you know making her worship me these are all parts of the dialogue of a man who may enjoy sex but if you're only hearing those it's clearly from the man who doesn't understand sex who hasn't had good sex well even a man who is truly a seducer and understands the larger context of all this is still gonna speak in that language, but the rest of us understand, especially when we start asking questions, that that this is a man who understands the creativity and the expression and all the things involved in it. Right. But the guy who doesn't have experience, all he's gonna hear is, I fucked that chick. And I, again, we're back to, I don't know whether it's frustration or disappointment. I think it's, I think it has its roots in disappointment, whether it's that they had, these people had sex and it wasn't good, or they tried and, and couldn't get it. But in, in any event, there's so many men and women um, who are just, Disappointed and disillusioned. Disillusioned is, is what happens when you believe that it's gonna that it's gonna be great. It's got to be great. Everybody says it's great, but it wasn't great for you. You know, and you don't think you can make it great. That's disillusioned. So, what is the power? You know, what is this thing that people should be looking for if they want to avoid or get past the disillusion of sex? Have more. I know. It's a foolish answer, but... I agree, man. It's... I think sex is so powerful it'll solve the problems within you. But then there's whatever it is. That person's so fucked up. The world's so fucked up. Something's so fucked up that there are people... Not a lot that have that combination of that they're highly sexually active, yet they're still disillusioned about sex. Oh, that's their self-esteem problem coming in. You know what, man? Sadly, I think that that's more women than men just because it's easier for women to fit that role. Like if a woman wants to be promiscuous, she has a larger open door than a man. Mm -hmm. A man can be promiscuous. And it's a little bit, he can do it. That's what I did. This was me, you know, at a certain point. But like I said, it can't last long. There's just so much disillusionment in it that you, you, move, you gotta it's move past good. it. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good. But I think the missing component of sex with those people 
is a lack of connection, a lack of right. allowing that woman to change them and so on. You know, it's an You're interesting just churning thing. the numbers. The, the oversexed person can be confused or can be just doused and dipped and swim in pleasure. It's, but the difference has to do with the allowance of the exchange. Right. When you, when, if you don't believe you deserve it, it's just not, nothing can be good enough. If, if you're not good enough, nothing you do can be good enough. Dude, that's the, that's the train of thought I've been on. Well, sex ain't gonna fix that. I mean, you can't love somebody into believing that they're worthy of love. Hmm. I tried. I really tried. I want to hear that story. <laughs> I really tried. I want to hear the story of how you came out of that. Well, she died. That's, a, you know, no more. End of story. I, but how did you change from that? Just because you remove, in this case, a person from the situation, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that you learned anything new about yourself. Uh, you know, I'm really surprised that I survived with my self-esteem intact. And, and, and I don't... I don't know why I would have after years of hearing how, you know, since she didn't think she was good enough, of course, now I wasn't good enough. And after years of having to hear that, um, I don't know how I managed to survive believing that I'm okay. But I did, somehow. Um, I don't really, I don't understand all that. These beliefs are really, um, really deeply rooted. These beliefs of good enough or not good enough are, are very deeply rooted. And nobody outside us can change them. Hmm. Um, and I, I, like I say, I know for a fact you can't love somebody into believing they're worthy of love. But, and I hadn't realized it until now, how did I survive with my self-esteem intact? The belief that I'm okay after years and years of being told in <laughs> multitude of daily ways that I'm not good enough. Um, these beliefs are really deeply rooted and we, the only person that can change them is ourselves. Where do we start? I don't know. I don't know. But that goes back to that 10% thing. Somewhere you've got to decide what you want. Which, it's very tempting to take that next step and say, well, I've got to work on this. You know, I've, I've got to analyze it and I've got to have a program and I've got to work on it which is the linear way of thought that is not, it's not gonna work for sex and it's probably not gonna work for self-esteem either. Uh, I really don't know. You, you're into a place where I'm not. Yeah, but whatever, I'm not, uh, I guess I am asking. I mean, look, so how somebody gets past this what about your story of that? What about how you learned? Learned what? How to fix that 10%, fix that thing that was avoided. Because maybe it's just age and life experience. The sex part? Let's go with the sex part. Um, I've always been a pretty good lay. Not that it was a, 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 a much self-expression, and not that I had mo much under or any understanding of, of my own sexuality. 
but I've always been a pretty good lay. Um, and and that's kind of where it started from, and then I realized there's more. There's there's an infinite range of possibilities, and and I wanted to try some of them, and and that's what it grew from. Um, it's it's not something that I just discovered one day. I mean, I've always been a sexual creature and a pretty good lay. I mean, that's one of the few things in this life that I'm good at. <laughs> well, you know, I'm there. There, we all have to know. You know what we're truly talented at, and I. You know, by the luck of the draw, that was one of mine. <laughs> so what makes good sex? Uh, allowing anything to happen. That's interesting. Anything's allowed to happen. Uh, 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 when you limit it, it's not good sex when anything can happen. What's so interesting about that is that, man, people who are not having good sex, like, or people that are, are afraid of something to happen cannot have good sex. Yeah. Or they can't, they can, there's a point where there's enjoyment, there's fulfillment, there's enough. But to get to that true beauty of sex, the sexual life sex, you have to get rid of your repression. I, I, man, I think that is an insane topic. And, and your limitations. And it might be that nothing's going to happen, that it's just going to be plain vanilla missionary position. And it might be that that's all you want or need, but if you're restricted to that, if you've got a color inside the lines, it's not going to be good. No, that's not the right way to put it. There's always going to be something lacking if you have to color inside the lines. If you can't just go go wild. Well, but but sometimes you don't want to go wild. But the idea that anything can happen. Yes. You know that that I am, I am not holding you back from having your way with me. I'm not holding me back from expressing my desires of sex with you. Mm -hmm. That is such an important part of it. And even when you get into friendship, like. If you're holding any part of yourself back as a friend in a non-sexual way, you, you really can't, you're limiting yourself from the joys of friendship. I think this is the missing piece because you can gain excellence in a job, in a career. You can gain excellence in your body. You can gain excellence in a lot of the societal definition of what makes you great. Mm -hmm. But you cannot in relationships, sex, even really with your body in terms of your personal health, not necessarily what society says looks good or is healthy, with repressing yourself. You can't. You have to have fluidity of who you are. Well, repressing or limiting, because I'm, I'm thinking about sex in terms of drawing a box around it. You know, we can't go there. We can't do that. Right. Right. Don't you dare suck my toes. <laughs> well, I, I, all I've got to do is hear that once, and you know what I want to do. <laughs> and you know why it's not good enough? Because <laughs> you drew that line. Oh, it would be good to, to cross that line. 
Now I got something I want. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear more of, of you crossing that line. So, of course, we'll talk more. We'll do a bunch of these things. Everybody wants to hear more of what you say. Like you have your following. What's coming up in the train of thoughts? Oh, the train of thought. I'm loving the train of thought, people. This is this is cool. Cause and what that is, that's just Jim's audio podcast he's been putting out. And, and I'm just starting to do it as, as an audio podcast. But it's always been there. It's always been there. And, and, and y'all in TSL uh, make this happen. It wouldn't happen w- without you guys. Um, and the things that you say and the things that you do that days later echo in my head. Um, as far as what's coming up, I'm not really sure um, because there's no telling from one week to the next what train of thought I'm going to be on. Um, I've been thinking about hot chicks and why guys think they want hot chicks. They don't really. Um, I've been thinking about appreciating women, the appreciation of women and, and the amazing beings that they are. Um, the contrast between masculinity and femininity and how to how to express that contrast, you know, how to live in that. Um, and, and that's the most current things I got going on, but there will be more. There will be more because I, it's always been there and, and I enjoy putting it out where the rest of you can get, get at it, get to it. I like to watch. I like to be watched. So, y'all just watch this. That's like Shirley MacLaine and Peter Sellers all in one. Yeah. I like to watch. I like to be watched. (laughs) Good stuff, good stuff. All right. That's it. Sign up for TSL Online, Men's Development Excellence, all that sort of stuff. Do it. You want to be on the Thursday night meetups? Do it. Bye. Sell your shit. Yeah, don't, don't tell me you're broke. Don't even tell me you're broke. Sell your shit. I know you've got that old piece of rust bucket down back. It's Oh, it's a classic. It's a Mustang. It's a fucking Alfa Romeo. I know you got it down there growing weeds. Sell your shit. This is what Craigslist is for. Sign up for TSL. Change your life. Adios, motherfuckers. Oh, now I got the flip screen. All right. Sell your shit. Sign up for TSL. Do this, people. Come on. You've been putting this off for how long? How fucking long? Oh, people. Look. How many different times do you have to be told that this is going to change your life? How many? How many different people have to tell you? We've got... Dozens and dozens of testimonials, guys, that say it would be worth many, 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 many times more money than we get for it. You got to do this. Sell your shit. Sign up for TSL. Just fucking handle it. All right, Jim and I have been talking about this. We just did an interview. Thinks it's... It sucks. It sucks. But anyway, whatever. Listen to it. Watch it. Sell your shit. That's the theme of the day. Sell your shit. Sign up for TSL. I know you got shit. I know you got the rust bucket down in the weeds. You got a garage full of exercise equipment. You got four fucking generations of electronics. Sell your shit. Sign up for TSL. All right, watch the interview. Wild stuff has been happening. Oh, yeah. Had some car difficulty right after our amazing interview. So. Now we're waiting for an Uber to pick us up at the Whataburger. What's the best thing at Whataburger, Jim? The Whataburger. I like the Whataburger. Man, I like that thing. I like that honey barbecue action. What are you shooting? 
Dude, it's called vlogging, Jim. It's where it's we take vlogging. We take people on a journey of our experience, so they can be right here with us. We call a puber to come and get us. We call the lift. Give it the times, man. We're bringing them with us on what exactly it's like to be kind of fucked. Broke down on a hot summer day. And starting a workshop, so we got this broken down vehicle and we got to get up north to where the people are. That's him right there. That's that's the Uber. 